Okay, so we're going to take a look at iAd Producer. iAd Producer is uh, free software from Apple that allows the user to create iBooks author widgets as of version 4.0, I believe. Uh, that, don't quote me on that, though. All right, so when you first load an iAd Producer, you're going to see a template uh, very similar to your template chooser for iBooks author, for pages, for Keynote. So they're going to give you some uh, of these standard templates to use. Um, we're just going to choose a blank one and show you what you can do with that. So I'm going to select blank and it's going to load um, kind of an overview page. So this is kind of um, an outline or thumbnail view of what you got going on in this widget right now. So uh, page one exists, there's a background, um, and then there's a loading scene. So if I double click on the page one, it's going to pop it up for me, and you can see that I have it set for the iPad Retina display. I can also change that to an iPad 2, and I can change the viewing uh, percentage. So I'm going to go iPad 2, 75%. Um, and that's how I'm going to create. So going across the top here, um, again, I can jump between layers here, uh, jump to my background layer or my loading layer uh, if I want to change some of the elements there. I'm just going to stay right here on page one. If I ever want to go back to see that thumbnail view, um, I can click overview. Now I can also add new pages. So this is very um, similar to Keynote in the way that you would add slides to a deck. I can add pages. Uh, or if you're using Tumult's Hype, um, I believe they're called Scenes in Hype. So it's very similar to adding scenes here. So this is going to create some interactivity between pages. So you can create some buttons that will link you to page 2 and page 3. So if you want to get rid of one, you just have it highlighted and you can hit delete. So I'll keep two pages on there. Uh, again, I'm just going to double click on page 1 and that sends me back open to edit page 1. Down in the lower left hand corner, uh, my assets are any video, audio, or images that I have that are going to build into this widget. Objects are some of the standard pre-built, um, I guess, um, objects that you can throw onto your widget to create a little bit of interactivity. Uh, actions are things that your objects are going to do. Uh, and then you can layer things onto your page here as well. You can see here, um, the only layer that we have uh, aside from the actual widget is is the background. So if I click on that layers again, it will close it up. Um, if at any time I want to actually edit the HTML code, I could just come in here and select code, and I can see the different um, um, project parts uh, or parts of this project that I could come in and create some code for. And then at any time I can preview my widget. Uh, inspector is very similar to any other inspector that helps you change the, the look and feel of whatever it is you have selected. Uh, and then finally, action list. So this is going to be kind of like um, your timeline uh, that would say when you click on an object, um, start doing this action. So I'll just click off of that. Um, and let's just start by adding in an object. So uh, let's start in by adding an HTML. Um, box and so uh, to do this this is going to be um, one of the nice things for teachers I believe is that uh, you can grab an embed code an iframe from pretty much anywhere so our first example we'll use just a YouTube video and we can drop that in there so if I double click on that HTML box you can see here it's going to load um, this object HTML view.html um, is that object it says paste your HTML code here so I'll go back out here to Safari, and I'm just going to go into YouTube, and I'm going to go to my friend Steve Dickey, because he's got a very cool uh, video on this slow motion um, beaded chain. So I, I really like his video here, and I want to stick this into my book for my students to be able to view it. Uh, so I'm just going to pause this here. Um, down below it says Share. If I click on Share, and I click on Embed, I see that I have an iframe here. So I'm just going to uh, copy, control C, and then go back over to my iAd producer, and I'm going to paste that iframe code right in here, control V. Now, also, um, thanks to Steve Dickey, he told me that uh, um, as of late, YouTube has been leaving off the HTTP colon forward slash forward slash www. So we need to add that into that iframe code. So you just place, place your cursor there, uh, type in HTTP colon and now it should work. So if I close that up and hit save, I'm actually going to see his video there um, and I can move that box around. So uh, here's his video that will play uh, this part of that widget. If I wanted to preview that, I could just select preview um, and I can actually play it right here. So here's his, his video. 
Okay, if I wanted to stop that, I'll just X out of that, and I can come back here and I can add some more things in. So um, maybe this is a video of some sort of story problem, and I wanted to add in a little um, scratch pad over here for students to actually be able to write um, out the problem. So let's see if I can just, there we go. And I'm just going to have a little scratch pad down here at the bottom. So here's my scratch pad for students to actually be able to write on. Uh, if I wanted to create a little box or a frame around that, I'm just going to open up my inspector. I'll close my objects here so I have some room. Um, you can see over here I can put a border around that. Um, so if I check out the border, um, it's got three pixels. I, it's a straight line, color of black. If I want to change the color, I can do that in here. Um, so I'll just click off of that. If I want to give it a shadow or a reflection, so on and so forth. Just to close those up, I just hit that little up arrow. Uh, right now my brush is set to be white. So I can come in and change that default brush. I like uh, blue, and I'm going to change the size of that. So we'll make that size somewhere down there, um, around 6 pixels. Sounds good. Um, if I want to change the layout of it, again, this is uh, just going to allow me to move it around on that canvas. If I wanted to give it exact measurements, I could do that. So uh, there you go. Um, so now kids will have a little bit of scratch pad. Let's just preview that and see what's going to happen. So they can watch the video. Um, they can write down here on their scratch pad and all sorts of fun and exciting things. So I'm just going to close that out. Uh, if you wanted to give them a way to clear that, we could add in an object such as a button. So we'll drag our button over here and close up my inspector here. Uh, and I could just change that to erase. Uh, and then it, while I have that button highlighted, I'll give uh, the inspector a click here, and I'm going to come all the way down here to the bottom where it says events. And so if I click on events and I scroll down, now when this is activated, I want this to be able to clear the drawing. So come all the way down here to the bottom one and clear drawing. Um, if I want to confirm before it actually clears, I can check off on this box. I'm just going to, in this case, have it clear. So um, close that up. We'll just do the little preview again. There it is. I can draw all I want. I can erase it uh, and have a new scratch pad. So you can think about uh, great ways on how to use that.